how much better or worse are you or the same if you do 20 hours of jujitsu or more or less? Can I start the bidding? Okay. Somebody have a go. Somebody make a fool of yourself. Sorry? Less is better. Less is better. Okay, they're like controversial. Um, <laughs> I guess it's the quality that counts. Uh, okay, I'll put you all out your misery on question one. It is uh, 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 three x twenty-four, three times as much. If you do more than more than twenty hours of due diligence, and this is something that Angels um, uh, was in an Angel survey. Okay, the next question is: If you are an experienced founder who is helping a business, mentor a business with industry experience, what is your impact on the likely outcome statistically? in terms of multiples. Is it zero? Is it minus? Could be minus. You might know too much, might be a busybody. Or are you adding value? And if so, uh, what's your X multiple? Can someone else make a fool of themselves? Two times. Two times is not a bad answer. In fact, it is pretty much spot on. Sorry, where's the gentleman? Oh, well done, Andy. Very good. OK, spot on. So there you go. There we have it. That's my presentation. Um, <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Uh, so this is kind of what we're uh, what we're about, and I think it's really just I think it's just uncovering things that people just don't really uh, think about, which is just doing homework and having the right people do that homework. So a bit about us: we're a fund of uh, mostly entrepreneurs um, who have built uh, businesses and sold them. We're London and Cambridge based, so we have a very very high tech focus, uh, life sciences and tech. <coughs> and you can see some figures there, um, and I'll talk a little more about our model, but just to sort of show the people behind us. Um, and uh, we've got uh, a couple of entrepreneurs. Adrian sold three businesses. I've only sold one at this point. Um, David and uh, Richard have run venture capital funds and, and Ernie as well. Um, so that's kind of the makeup of people. We came together really around this venture model. So it's a bit of a dry slide, so I put a bit of color around it. But it's really about um, a theme that we've heard today and I think a theme that will be more, uh, even more relevant in the future, which is we have a, a network of 300 uh, venturers, we call them, um, when we define them in a certain way and they're not just angels, they're not just executives, but they're people who give up their time to invest and they've got sector expertise and we only invest and we only select them to invest uh, when we've got a match. And that's really our model. We call it mammalian investing rather than reptilian, we've got nothing against reptiles and we've got nothing pro-mammals. Um, it's really just the, uh, if you think about the sort of survival strategy of both uh, genuses, I'm sorry I'm not a biologist, but whatever they are. Um, you, the mammalian is more about investment and making sure things uh, <coughs> nurturing. Uh, reptiles is, is to spread your bets. And frankly, there's no right or wrong answer in this game. We're not going to say one is better than the other. Uh, a bit about the, oh, this is an old slide. It's slightly old. Anyway, that's OK. A um, bit about some of the businesses we invest in. Um, so we have a data security business, which is here, which is one of our latest investments. And this one is actually allowing people to collaborate safely. It's a very boring problem, and it's a very big, boring problem solved in a very, very disruptive way. So if you think about you're collaborating with other people, you want to share data with them. You can't do work. You don't want to be put off by these data loss prevention, what are they called, uh, loss, uh, sales prevention officers, something like that. Um, so that, and they solve that problem. Uh, we've got desktop genetics, which is genome editing software. You can edit your own genes whilst you're alive. It blows your mind, could literally change your mind, um, uh, but I'll leave you ponder on that one. Uh, we have an Alzheimer's therapeutic, which we've done a couple of rounds through the Cuba platform. That one is looking very exciting. It will never be a revenue generating business. The science is just getting stronger and stronger. We've done some awful things to rats, um, but I have to say, in the name of science and a very personal cause, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, it'll be binary. It's not one to not have diversified but um, gives you an idea about some of the, probably at the really casino end of what we do um, from, a, from a sort of a, a outcome point of view. And then probably at the other end is, is this one where we've had a mass majority exit, and I'll talk a bit about that. That's airport scanners. Actually, it's not airport scanners. It's miniaturized airport scanners for suspect packages. So on platforms and other things that keep you safe or keep you paranoid, um, these are one of the, the things that, uh, uh, that keep all this, those gray, mysterious people with earpieces in business. Um, various other things. Uh, one that's not on here is another recent investment, which is a Cambridge spin out uh, called Echion. And uh, we're delighted with this one quite recently. It's an SEIS EIS blend. And it's transforming the way that batteries, I mean, batteries are a real limiting factor in what we're able to do next. 
Uh, if you're involved in any kind of automotive or mobile phones or any kind of wind farm or anything like that, it's all about batteries. There's a massive constraint now for a lot of technology moving forward. And uh, what they've come up with is a deep uh, crystalline structure. It's a platform, they'll call it, which is a bit of an abstract concept. But essentially, for, for you and I, it makes batteries last longer and it makes them uh, hold their charge uh, by orders of magnitude. Um, it's going to be a bit of a long-term play. It was SEIS. But again, we're rolling the dice in terms of big ideas here. And uh, there's some big uh, Cambridge scientists behind that one. There's a big Cambridge scientist behind the genome. And I'm not saying anything about Cambridge scientists, but it's just some credibility that these things sometimes come from the humblest. But in fact, the Alzheimer's one came from the humblest beginnings, if you believe. Um, some exits from some of the entrepreneurs before in our lives and one from the fund there. Some pretty ch uh, chunky exits that we've had. And welcome to ask me about various things in uh, data security. Um, uh, Oxford Diffraction is a, a crystalline uh, technology, um, analysis technology, and uh, yeah, other interesting things there. What I wanted to do just in the time we have available is really take you through the lifestyle, just to give you a flavor of the style. There's also great managers that you've seen tonight and you will see, and that's the beauty about the Cuba uh, platform and the, the whole proposition. So it's just really giving you a flavor of the style of boundary capital, which is how we get involved. So we had this uh, business, uh, pretty you know, technical founder, languishing, nerdy, getting involved in all the wrong things. I know that's very easy to say in hindsight. Um, this guy, you know, the founders were not particularly non-business minded, but um, you know, with a fresh pair of eyes, and particularly the guy that we brought on board, the venturer, um, you, the, uh, the whole business was transformed quite substantially. Um, so that's the devices, that's what they look like. Um, that's what they look like now. Um, actually, I should, I should have had a before picture because they really were, um, and it sounds really trite, but they weren't, um, they didn't have a great feel to them. Um, also, the technology in them, we've licensed, or the company has licensed from a couple of universities to give ultra high resolution, some sniffing technology, really to put as much as possible in a, in a box um, that size. So again, our real asset, and we've heard it before, and it will never change, is the people. Um, we've got a great guy who's got big company experience, but very, very importantly, has also got small company experience. There's different um, uh, oxygen uh, levels at different things and different experiences, and big company people can be disaster and vice versa. So it's good that you've got to have both. You can kind of see his friends there. So um, we brought him in as uh, executive chairman. He came in, whoops. And actually, I need to go back to the slides, but essentially we've got a 4.1 exit um, for the majority of the holdings. That's an aggregate for investors. We were pretty pleased with that. Um, and there's still some left over uh, to go. So that's kind of a lifestyle. And that took three years. In fact, it took almost three years and one month, which is the exception. Um, most of these investments you should allow five to seven, particularly for high tech. Uh, this one was great. We, met, we got it was listed on, on AIM. So we were able to not control the exit, but to time it um, uh, when it was uh, relevant. So a bit about our stats um, there, um, and our CAGAs and so forth. And um, uh, obviously, I'll be around. We have an evergreen fund, um, EIS and SEIS, sorry, two funds. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you uh, found that interesting. Uh, and uh, if you want to see me afterwards, I'll be in the back somewhere. Thank you very much. <laughs>